rapid, in fact, a massive inflation in genders. At one point, biologists were allowed to determine what biology was, and there were two, male and female. Now there's agender, bigender, two-spirit, herja, hedra, we could go on forever, uh, literally forever, because the core in orthodoxy is that there are infinite genders, but not everyone agrees. Some people believe in science at their peril, it turns out. Lake Engel is one of them. He's a student at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. In a religion class, a class about Christianity, he stated his belief that there are two genders because, again, that's biology. And for that, he was told he had to apologize in front of the class, stand silently while they critiqued him for the education camp stuff. Lake Engel joins us tonight. Lake, thanks for coming up. Thanks for having me, Tucker. So I don't know if I was mischaracterizing that. You had this professor called Allison Downey who was so threatened because you disagreed with her that she tried to get you to sign some form apologizing for your unorthodox, non-allowed thoughts. And then what happened? Right, yeah, she asked that I would sign a document complying with her asking me to apologize to the class as well as giving her a written apology. She asked that I would stand in front of the class in silence um, as I apologized and then they would give any comments on my outbursts. Did she say what specifically she was so offended by? Uh, she didn't like the fact that I disagreed with the subject being pushed in class being more than one gender, male privilege, uh, systemic sexism, and uh, mansplaining. What's, is mansplaining a, a, a measurable thing? I mean, is it a like, species of social science studying mansplaining? What is mansplaining anyway? Do you know? Did you learn? Um, I'm not sure. I think it's any time a, a man speaks, really. Huh. And so no, it isn't measurable. What did you, right, I mean, it's a, it's a species of dumbness, really. So, but what did you, it's propaganda, what did you say about gender that made her so mad, specifically? Well, I first referenced uh, entities like The Economist who have debunked the myth of the 77 cents on the dollar wage gap. And I also stated that biologists don't agree that there are more than two genders. Um, they don't believe that there are 72 genders or more across the board. M most of them disagree. And she really didn't appreciate that. So by citing the long-standing view of biologists, the hard scientists, Alison Downey, who supposedly you say she's a professor, tried to get you to stand in front of the class and take abuse. Did you do that? No, I didn't. Uh, I was supposed to, but she really didn't give me a chance. I was given 10 days to comply, uh, but the day after she asked this of me, she decided to push it on through to the university's provost office to then hold a hearing, which would decide whether or not it could be allowed in class, period. Why do you go to this school? Why does anybody go to this school or any other school? I mean, what are you getting out of this exactly? Well, I initially went for athletics my freshman year, but that's a long gone dream now. Um, I'm pretty much just stuck here. Man, I wish I could hire you. I would encourage you and anyone else who has any experience like this to drop out and join the workforce. It's not worth it. This is a joke. It's a bubble, and we're I all going to realize that in 10 years. Like, you're a brave man for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you. Pure narcissism at work, by the way. <laughs> you know, to hijack, a, to hijack an event like this that other people put time and effort into and to use the, their, their civility of the crowd and the civility of the organizers as an excuse to 
blatantly yell out your ill-informed opinions is no way to conduct a civil dialogue. It's absolutely appalling. The people who do that should be embarrassed. I, I guess I would also say that as students and as faculty members, you shouldn't put up with it. There's no way that you should allow people who are doing this to hijack your educational opportunities and to bend and twist the, the, the functions and the structures of the university. It's, it's not a good thing, not in any way at all. I would say that was a very disgraceful display, fundamentally. So Let's, let's stick with it. Why... Why do you think people are afraid of free speech? Well, you know, people develop an ideological view of the world because they don't want to think through things in real detail, and they're aided and abetted in that endeavor by their pathological professors who are feeding them, uh, uh, what would I say, an oversimplified, an oversimplified radical view of the world that, in my estimation, is fundamentally based in, in resentment. Not that there's no reason for, say, a left-wing view of the world, and we can get to that later. It's, it's easy virtue. You know, you can stand up in front of 900 people with your placard and your, and your screeching, and you can, you can declaim to the entire audience your fundamental moral superiority. You can tell everyone at, at once that they're all beneath you and you're standing for the right thing, and absolutely none of that is earned. You know, like, what the, he what the hell was that? There's, it's com no, seriously, man. There's just, it's just complete misbehavior. It's embarrassing. And the fact that pe the people who do that don't have enough sense to go hide their head in shame just tells you how badly socialized they are and how terribly educated they are. And the thing is, the thing that's so awful is that there are professors and educators who promote that. They say, well, that's how you change the world. It's like it is how you change the world, but it's certainly not how you make it better. You make it worse, clearly. You know, there's no comfort in that. And there's nothing about it that's impressive. It's no, it's no better in some sense than a two-year-old having a tantrum on the floor. It's, it shows, as far as I'm concerned, it, it, it approximates the same level of psychosocial development. So when the fact that, that this is happening continually at universities, is, it's, it, it, it truly makes me embarrassed to be associated with the university. And, and I say that with great displeasure because, you know, I've been working for great universities for a very long time, and the university is an absolutely remarkable institution. You know, it's survived for a thousand years, and and to see it to see it brought down by by people whose behavior would be out of place at a four-year-old's birthday party is is something something abysmal to behold. So, so what about have the upper hand in everything, including access to communication? These people are not your friends. <laughs> Can we say, you know, that's that, that, and, and mark my words, that's the sounds of the barbarians pounding at the gates. Right. Yeah, that's, I'll, I'll tell you again, too, that use of inchoate, what would you call it, inchoate sensation is the best formulation of their argument. And there's not much difference between knocking on the doors and knocking on you. So keep that in mind. It's not amusing. There's nothing to it. There's nothing for it. The thing that's also quite appalling is that there's no evidence whatsoever that the people who are conducting these protests know what it is that they're protesting against. You know, I was in... I, I, I was in the midst of a discussion attempting to make the case that it's freedom of speech that's, that is what people who have nothing still have, right? So if you look at the tyrannical structure of our society, let's say the people at the top have access to means of communication. Everyone knows that. It's the people at the bottom who have the right to say what they think, however badly they say it, that enables them to get a toehold into the system and to, and to make their suffering known. That's what freedom of speech is for. And so, like, what's the protest against that? And I'll tell you, you know, 
that the radical neo-Marxist types, they speak the language of power, and that's what they're speaking right now. And if you want to live in a world where everyone speaks the language of power, then just let them do what they're doing and see what happens. I wouldn't recommend it. It's not a pretty road. And you're all in a position, you're all in a situation in your life now where you have to make decisions about these sorts of things. Like, is this the sort of institution